If you are over 18, size 18, you do not wear spandex. Oh, Look man. at the fish they got in Florida. <laughs> I don't want to have to put my blinds up so some little pervert like you will watch me with my girlfriend. Yeah. Why? <laughs> In a perfect world, there would be no need for a show like this, but this is reality, so wake up, my friends, and smell the soup. Greg Kinnear back with you, checking out highlights not of the day in talk, but of the entire week. We've got the most memorable words spoken, the most fascinating events that have transpired, all coming before you over the next hour of television that I think you'll wake up tomorrow, possibly pick up the phone, and tell a friend about. At least that's my hope. Coming up today, good show for you. Princess gets hot under the dog collar thanks to her new pet vibrator. Oh, boy. Mm. Uh, you'll meet the man who runs the Pez Dispenser School for Pez Dispensing. Plus, Derek nibbles his girlfriend's face like a piece of beef jerky. So, sure, you could go flip over to the Weather Channel, but think of what you'd miss here. First up, this next guest from Sally Jesse Raphael wants to debunk the myth that men are attracted to women with firm, young, supple bodies. She's also promoting the concept that well-trained lovers can sustain the heights of romantic ecstasy for three awe-inspiring hours. Whatever you think of this theory or any of the theories you're about to hear, you have to give Basha an A for Emerus. What we're working on together and what I uh, have done previously with younger men is to erase that notion of sex as being something sexual, you know, and women have to have heart as a matter of fact <laughs> when it's softer the woman is softer and her responses are softer and uh, i have been trained to to be an orgasm for up to three hours an orgasmic state and my partner can be the same and it's probably not what you're it's not like <laughs> you know it's not that, but it, it's it's an epidermal all over the body all over the skin kind of orgasm which which is um a beautiful way to come into the world and to, to maintain your aliveness in the world. I did ask, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure I heard three hours? Yes. Well, actually, we can go up to three hours or more uh, with a trained man. What a way to start a program. And I hate to kick things off without really having any sort of response to a clip like that. And I hate to have to do this, but... Um, Michael? This is good stuff. Thank you. Nigel plans to use his experience to train women his own age. Didn't have a lot to say in that clip, did you notice? Sort of kept a little, little hush thing happening. Monday on Sally Show, you'll meet a woman who says she's a bully and proud of it. Keep your lunch money out of sight. She's a real meanie. She's victims confront bullies. Sally on Monday. Stormy. This is the name of an individual you're about to meet here on the award-winning weekend edition of Talk Soup. Stormy says Marlo should be grateful. Several months ago, she filled out an employment application for her sister and helped her land a job. Of course, when it comes to filling out applications for herself, Stormy has been woefully remiss. As Montel Williams learned, she's perfectly content living off the fruits of her sister's labor. I'm being used. I'm getting drained. You know how you, you got a towel and you just wring it out? Stormy's wringing me out good. Everything Stormy got on pal, I have bought for her. There's nothing that she had bought because she don't have the money to buy because she don't have no job. Okay. So she is jobless and she lives in your house. Uh-huh. Now, how come you let her move into the house? No, because she has an 11-month-old baby that looks just like me and I can't put her out in the street. <laughs> <laughs> looks like Auntie, Auntie yeah, like Marlo. T.T. Yeah. T. Okay, so it looks like T.T. Uh -huh. Marlo. So you won't put her out, but, I mean, how long has this been going on now? This has been going on about, how old is the baby, 11 months? 11 months. 11 months? Uh-huh. Oh, she no. moved in. You wasn't even here when she was first born. I was not here in the first building, Kelsey. Okay, okay, Stop 10 playing. months. 10 months. It 10 months. months. It hasn't been going on 10 months because we live with mom. Well, we moved in that house. I worked at the chicken. I worked at the chicken. I worked at the Let me finish. I worked at a chicken. I worked at a chicken job. Okay. God knows I didn't want to work at this place, but I worked at it anyway. 
because of her. She needed this, she needed that. You had two jobs for a while. Yeah, I had two jobs for a while. Now I understand you quit one of those jobs, right? I quit one of those jobs because I work in... Uh, what did she tell you when you quit it? Huh? What did she... She, she got mad, y'all! She got mad at me! Well, Marlo, in Stormy's defense, she can't really freeload off you if you're not financially solvent. So, keep working. Although her two-tone, multi-tiered hair weave is worth a small fortune to the Marlowe family, she swears Stormy is driving her to the poorhouse. Exactly how is she doing that? Who pays the rent? Who pays the food bills? Who pays the gas and electric bill? Who pays the water bill? Who pays the clothing bill? Who pays all the bills? Hallelujah! Who's really easy to take advantage of? Monday, Montel here is for men who are trying to rid themselves of fatal attraction dealing with... Whew, dealing with crazy, nutty, kooky, wacky ex-girlfriends, Monday. Well, those wedding bells don't have to be the death knell for your sex life. Married couples can be just as creative, spontaneous as their single counterparts. Take Jim and Judith, for example. Please. Even though their husband and wife, these two clinical psychologists, prove that they're game for a little role-playing every now and then. Here they are with a little demonstration on the Mo Show. This is a bit odd. What do you do for a living? Yes. I'm an ophthalmologist. Ophthalmologist? Yes, uh-huh. And did you work a lot? Full-time, of course. Uh -huh. Yes, uh-huh. And uh, you're so attractive. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> oh! the way your suit feels. I'd like to know how many hours a week you work. Uh, well, <laughs> recently my practice has gone up. I'm working now uh, five and a half days a week. Um, and do you own your own car or condo? Um, well, I, I own a complex uh, in Venice. A complex in Venice? Is that more than one? I have some rental property, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, and... Uh, you know, I, I was thinking that we might order some champagne. I think that might uh, oh, start terrific. the evening. Oh, What kind off. of champagne? something expensive. Terrific, terrific. Yes, um, I really do, oh, you have wonderful hands. I really, I, uh, do you like to travel? Yes, I like to travel very, very much. Do you? <laughs> well, I just thought that perhaps, um, we might this weekend, um... Where? <laughs> there, wasn't it? Of course, if you're serious about your sexual role-playing, you may just want to contact Betsy and Andrew Milberg. They're couples who want more love, intimacy, pleasure, and spirit in relationships, and they can help you out. You see, they lead seminars, give talks, and do private sessions. For more information, call 310-289-3188 or write them at P.O. Box, whatever that is, in L.A., 90066. Yeah. Monday on the Mo Show, everything you ever wanted to know about lesbians, but we're afraid to ask. Mo will be talking to members of the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. Is that real? I guess that's real. You can really contact those people, and they'll help you with your, your love life. Al Silverberg has gone out with 2,000 different women since his wife's death 27 years ago. For a guy who's been up to bat that many times, he sure has trouble connecting. Lisa wanted to know how Al has managed to meet all of these women. He explained it's the result of a certain ad he keeps placing in the personal column. Take a look at this. 2,000 women? I have met 2,000 women in 27 years of being a widower. And uh, listen to me, children. <laughs> Take some good advice. I'm going to tell you something. Don't make me say it twice. And it's all because of love. Love is the most powerful force in the world. And if you can only have enough love, you will be the happiest and most powerful being in the universe. I feel like I'm caught in an infomercial all of a sudden. Well, now, Al, I, we're in the audience here with you on that. So how many dates did you have last year through the personal? Well, close to 300, about 275, I would say. I have one thing to say to you, Al Silverberg. 
Will you marry me? Well, Al, look at that. See how things work out. If Al looks familiar, that's probably because you caught his previous appearances on Studs or Love Connection. One of Lisa's audience members had this question for Mr. Swing and a Miss. If you're really serious about finding someone to live with for the rest of your life, and you've met over 2,000 women, how come you haven't picked one already out of those? The ones Ooh. that I have chosen that I like don't like me. And the ones oh. that I like that, uh, uh, I mean, the ones that uh, like me that really say, Al, you're the man for me. I would love to marry you. I don't want to marry them. So that's the story of my life. One of the sadder stories I've ever heard, I might add. This Tuesday, Lisa meets nice, nice guys who let lovers use them as doormats. Perhaps Al will be back on the program. That'll be Tuesday. We'll take a quick break and be back with a Jerry Springer highlight. Well, I guess not that short. Plus, some lesbian campers get intimate with Mother Nature right here next. Warping your mind at warp speed. It's the weekly wrap-up. We continue now. Daniel Boone was a man, was a big man. How big, you may be asking? Well, you can bet he wouldn't have appeared on the Shirley Show this week. The subject du jour, men who want enlargements in the penile area. <laughs> This clip features Will Smith, a candidate for this delicate operation. His doctor and an audience member thinks the whole idea is ridiculous. Basically, every man in the world would like to be bigger, true? But one inch doesn't seem like paying that much money uh, and going through that much inches, trouble for. And then you have five inches, that's a 25% increase. Yeah, but if you, have, if you could do something like if you had four inches and then all of a sudden you had 10 inches, now there's an operation. You know, one inch is... It doesn't seem worth it to me. Like, for, for you, buddy, with five inches, five inches of... I, you know, I don't measure, and I don't know about other guys, but I don't think that one inch for me and five inches you got, another inch isn't going to make that much difference. Well, and if your well, wife likes what, what, what you got... What about the girth? What about the girth? Yeah. Wear a, a ring. Make something a little ring. bit bigger. You wear the ring. Okay. Maybe it'll fit on you. I don't know. You really hate to see these clips end with one of the guests going, <laughs> Yeah, see? <laughs> well, hmm. Apparently, the operation will cost you about $53,000. This Tuesday, Shirley explores the subject of high school and college hazing when initiation ceremonies get out of hand Tuesday. You were the ring. <laughs> These lesbians from the Jerry Springer show love camping and they have the hiking boots to prove it. In order to commune with the great outdoors and other like-minded women folk, they've founded Sister Spirit, a 180-bed retreat in Ovid, Mississippi. Gee, I, I wonder what their neighbors think of the whole setup. Listen, if y'all are so threatened over there in this wonderful place y'all come to our community and put up, why is it that the law hadn't come and locked none of us up and y'all walking around with shotguns, 357 Magnum? I just explained why the law is not going to have a 357. And what you want to sit there and lie for, woman? You a liar, little boy. Sit down. Yeah. I heard about you. We know about you about you. all the stuff that you've done. You better repent yourself, boy. I ain't listening to it. The Constitution's on my side. We're governed by the laws. Okay. We're governed by the laws of the Constitution of the United States of America. That's not right. by the Bible and not by bigotry. That's right. Those people are funny. EPKA, the Sister Spirit Foundation is nonprofit and performs charitable functions like a food bank for the poor, I guess. On Jerry's show this Tuesday, meet kids who are given the boot by their own parents. Some of these teens say they've learned their lesson and now, finally, alas, want to return home. 
When we return, Andy the Gadget Guru gives his dog Woofy a scare, plus meet Earth's sexual ambassador to Alien Worlds next. They take sperm samples in several ways, sometimes with catheters, sometimes with just tubes. The most frightening is when they do a crossbreeding with a female alien. If the intergalactic police ever catch up with Jesse Long, he's going to owe some serious child support payments. Jesse admits he's fathered around 30 half-human, half-alien babies through the cosmos. He says he was forced to conceive these kids, as it turns out, against his will. Here's his, here's his story now. When I was 12, I knew I already had children because I had been shown children and said, these are yours because it was at age 12 they started taking sperm samples for genetic testing. That has continued throughout my life. I'm now 42. Over the course of my life, I estimate there's about 30 that I've been shown. And you've seen them? Yes. And it is very difficult. I mean, this is a very an emotional subject with me because I do not have earthly children. I love children, and it is very difficult to leave my children behind. I would like to take them with me. I mean, if you can imagine someone coming and taking your kids away from you and you can never see them again, can you imagine the emotional trauma that puts upon you? And to realize you have that many children that you can't do anything with, you can't are these have. Now, these children are, are from you and who else? Somebody, I don't know who else. Uh, just another human they person? Are, well, no. They take sperm samples in several ways, sometimes with catheters, sometimes with just tubes. The most frightening is when they do a crossbreeding with a female alien. It is one of the most horrifying moments you could ever imagine. Only because she is such a hideous creature. Mm. Well, Jesse, I'm no Thaddeus therapist, but perhaps if you could look beyond her moist, black, scaly exterior and the freakish, contorted, fang-bearing snout with the bubbly, slimy, pitched fork tongue and horns, you might see something beautiful inside. On Tuesday's show, Mo meets a Pee Wee Herman impersonator whose career hit the skids when his alter ego is involved in a scandal. Hitch yourself to a falling star, won't you? Tuesday. Oh. Hmm. Hey, after watching this highlight from the Today Show, you may finally understand the meaning of the expression heavy petting. <laughs> you see, this Monday, Katie Couric spoke with gadget guru Andy Parr. He was showing off a variety of pet toys, including a little number that's bound to have Fifi doing backflips. Take a look at this. This is the mouse chase here. This sells for $55. Uh -huh. And it's a cat scratching post, but it also has this mouse here on a little string that goes around in circles that will promise to make the cat crazy. Oh, that's great. Something Crazy's like that. So bananas for, with that. It sells for how much? For about $50. Uh-huh. Oh, it's that's a neat great. little thing, but for Valentine's Day, you definitely have to get the dog or cat a little gift basket. Uh-huh. You know, look at this. That's for about $5. This is for about $10. Look, you have little tacos in them. And back. Oh, Wolfie likes it. She's all ready to go. Go crazy. You know, $5 to $10 for something like that. It's amazing, these chewy things, how many different shapes they come in oh, these they, days. I but it's so much fun this year, you know, to, uh, to let the dogs. It's also kind of good for their teeth. Or you might want to get them a good collar. Point. This is from Protect a Pet. It's a flashing collar. So if you have to put your dog out at night to go do something, at least they'll be visible. Huh. And something like this for about $20 to $30. It's okay. really not bad. Here's something that I think is a little strange. To give him a little Yikes. massage, oh. the doggy vibe. Woofy does not like this thing. Oops. <laughs> and uh, the pad fell off. That sells for about $30 or so. But that other things... sort of ridiculous, doesn't it? Uh, not if you're a dog, Katie. Dogs have needs, too. She's been hosting the Today Show too long. She's forgotten about the world of canine recreation that's become so important over the last couple of years, the thriving business that it is. <laughs> the Doggy Vibrator has three different settings, Slow Throb, Chihuahua Treble, and Puree. Actually, all this talk about pet massagers, I guess, is, is really, if you think about it, kind of silly because animal lovers all know that all a dog really needs is a good tooth brushing. You simply grab the dog and you, uh, <laughs> that is our producer Eileen torturing her animal. Please contact her at E Entertainment Television. <laughs> On today show, Tuesday, Roseanne Arnold.
We'll be talking about her new book and her hit show, Roseanne. After this break, pardon me, miss, would you like to see my Pez dispenser and a love story you can really sink your teeth into? Coming up here next. It seems like media. You know what he does? He bites me all over my body, he bites me in my face. Back. Greg Kinnear still with you here. Ronnie and Christina have been dating now, I guess, for six months. She loves him. He loves her. Yet they've reached an important crossroads in the relationship, apparently. The day before this appearance on the Montel Williams show that we will present for you right now, Christina told Ronnie, out of pretty much nowhere, she wants to end it all. It seems she feels guilty about a certain secret that she's been keeping from him for some time now. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no alternative, really, but to present to you our Talk Soup clip of the week. There's a lot of things that I kept from him. Um, you want to go ahead and tell him now what it is you've been keeping from him? We're saying? Christina hasn't always been Christina. Who was um, Christina before? Christina was Jerome. Was Jerome? Yes. So you are a transsexual now? Yes. Did you have any idea at all? No. When did you, when did you go through with your operation? I'm still going through the operation. But I, um started the operations about a year ago. A year ago? Yes. So the two of you, have you been intimate together? No. Not, no. not, no, not, no. So you had no idea at all? None. Well, now, and I don't, I, I only say this because now knowing this, were you in love as of yesterday? Yeah. How do you feel today? <laughs> that is the highlight of Montel and our clip of the week. Kind of a sad one, actually. That is uh, Christina and Ronnie. I thought for sure he would say bamboozled as opposed to confused, but what do I know? Wednesday, Montel explains how you can pay to date Elvis or Richard Gere. Celebrity impersonator escorts Wednesday. Hey, if you don't think it can happen to you, by the way, Ronnie added this a little later in that last clip. We fooled around and everything. Chris Wait, she's woman down there. Christina I mean. is more... <laughs> she's woman down there. Okay, just wanted to set the record straight. Sue is perhaps the only woman in America who received her Valentine's Day candy in a Pez dispenser. Her husband, Richie, knows nothing. Gets her motor running like those chalky little rectangles, and he's happy to fuel the obsession, my friends. You see, both Sue and Richie are Pez fanatics. This highlight from the Vicky show should make that perfectly, perfectly clear. Play it that all. was love at first sight, huh, Rich? Well, I was knocked over. Yeah? I couldn't speak at all. So you, you guys got... When did you, how, when did you get married? June well, we got married 11th. June 11th of uh, 91. How'd you decide to do that? Well, our phone calls kept getting longer, and it would start and go until 4 o'clock in the morning. And we were staying on the phone because we didn't want to hang up. Mm -hmm. Just, it couldn't bear to hang up the phone. And one day I called, and he wasn't there. And I left 19 messages, and he wasn't there. And the next day he didn't call back, and he wasn't there. And at the end of the second day, he couldn't mm -hmm. let me. I got a phone call that said, I have good news and bad news. And I'm hysterical. Where have you been? What happened to you in the hospital or in jail? Where are you? And, uh, <laughs> and... He says, well, I have good news and bad news. I said, well, what's the bad news? Because I'd already been devastated for two days. And he says, well, I won't be able to talk to you on the phone for three or four more days. I couldn't stand it. He says, well, aren't you going to ask me the good news? I was ruining it for him, obviously. I said, all right, what's the good news? Well, he said, it took me two days. I came by train, and I'm in St. Louis. Because <gasps> oh. at that time, I didn't fly. I was terrified about flying. That's, That's okay. okay but you drove to out. see her. So now tell us about the honeymoon. Where'd you go on your honeymoon? Well... Oh. <laughs> Well, the first day, we went to the Pez factory for a tour. Mm -hmm. And then the second day, we did what most newlyweds do. We went out to the Pez convention in Ohio. Oh, that's too bad. Well, 
Sue and Richie's collection apparently is uh, a big one, and apparently a number of people across the country actually do collect these things. The psychedelic iPez dispenser will set you back $350. There is a limited uh, collector's item I know of that sells for, well, not very much. It's the Talk Soup Pez dispenser. But in my opinion, it's so authentic looking. See, you just won't find that kind of quality item. Nice belch. It's Wednesday. Vicky gets to know several cross-dressing entertainers. These men get all dolled up to resemble Marilyn Monroe, Tina Turner, and Cher. Frankly, this guest from the Ricky Lake show could use a little dental work, in my opinion. Then again, that might blunt his most effective weapon to date. You see, Derek is somewhat of, as you'll see, I guess, right now, at least according to his girlfriend, abusive boyfriend. When he gets really fired up, he attacks his girlfriend, Ashley, not with his fists, but apparently with his teeth. Take a look at this. Where did this, where did this come and from? You, I mean, you know, it seems like media. You know, you have all oh, no, it seems like, it seems like media. You need to shut up. It seems like you media. You know what he does? He bites me all over my body, bites me in my face. Whereas when I go out, guys, when I want to talk to me, because I have big patchy marks all over my face. So you need to just hush your face, okay? Sit and try to tell somebody what they should do in their relationship. You need to have yeah, a normal relationship. I have a normal Yeah, you here. But it seems like media and crack type psychiatrists, psychiatrists is always trying to tell people what's wrong with their relationships. And if the you're same, biting the woman you love all over her face, they yes, there no, is something wrong in your relationship. Can't argue with that. Highlight of Ricky Lake there from, I guess, Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. I don't think his teeth look that bad. Do you have a shot in there, or a little closer shot? They, oh, yeah, yeah, those are, those are bad. Those are choppers that you want to stay away from. Well, hey, this Wednesday, tune in to Ricky, and you'll hear from some angry white men who say they feel they're being, they're being discriminated against. That will be Wednesday. It's quiet time, Jerrica. Now put down the butcher knife. Disciplining a child with homicidal tendencies could be a challenge for, I guess, even the most patient parent. Naturally, Angela and Bill are pretty much at their ends' wits, or wits' ends, if you prefer. Since the age of three, their daughter, Jerrica, has been terrorizing them and the postman and family members. As Bertice Berry learned, she even rubbed out one of her own pets. She has two younger brothers. She hurts them. She's tried to drown them. She looks like an angel, but... Wait, no, 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 no. Tries to drown them? She has tried in the bathtub. She was just playing. She didn't mean it. She didn't know what she was doing. Uh, I don't know. I think she did. I think that sometimes she just gets this attitude <laughs> about her. Uh-huh. What other kinds of things? She has... Killed a pet mouse? No. <laughs> Jerrica, you said no? You didn't kill a pet mouse? Did you kill a pet mouse, Jerrica? No, he just died. <laughs> Mandy's rat. Mandy's rat? Yeah, because it got a little pimple on its back leg. It had a pimple on its back leg, and that's yeah. what made it just die? Yeah. First, they took it to the pet store. And they got it fixed, and then it came back, and it died. Mommy, what happened? Well, that was a different story. About two years ago, I guess it was, she had a mouse. She was holding it. It pooed on her hand. She punched it to death. Oh. Wow. Jerrica, apparently, and this, this isn't anything to, to be smiling about, so I don't know why you'd be smiling, Tom. The rest of us don't think it's very funny. She pulled a butcher knife on her Aunt Zelda, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily make her a bad kid. Anyway, believe it or not, this probably doesn't surprise anyone that Warner Brothers or Columbia or somebody is, is doing a feature film on her, I guess. One of those straight-to-video things. I don't know if we have a clip. Warning. Take cover. Out of the murk and mystery. 
of a hundred million years ago. Run for your lives. It's Jerrica. Coming soon to a theater near you. This film is not yet rated. I mean, this puppy is going to video so quick. <laughs> I mean, before it was even shot, I believe it was on video. Wednesday, behind the scenes of the Jackson Family Honors. Still to come, footage of the two liquor store clerks beating the tar out of a would-be robber, plus a common kitchen becomes a musical instrument right here next. Like braiding tongues with the person you despise most. This is Talk Soup. We continue now. Jeannie and Debbie are lucky to be alive. They own a small liquor store. I don't know in what part of the country. A perpetrator came walking in one evening he was not, fortunately for them, armed with a gun. He was armed, however, with a hair pick. Nonetheless, they were not frightened of him. They became heroes. They not only assaulted him and got him out of the store, but they foiled his robbery attempt. This week, Maury Povich broadcast the footage filmed by the store security camera. Take a look at this. He walked in, turned his back to me, and he went straight to Debbie, and he told, she said, may I help you? And he said, I want all your money, and I heard this, and I thought it was a joke, and that's when uh, she says, well, what have you got in your pocket? He said, I've got a gun. I heard that. I came up with a bottle in my hand that I had been stocking with, a bottle of wine. Wait a second. You took a bottle of wine, mm -hmm. and you walk up behind this guy like this, and bang him up. of Maury Povich there. That is actually some amazing footage caught on surveillance cam. We have these surveillance cams all over the building here at uh, the Big Brother Network, E! Entertainment Television. In fact, uh, it's kind of fun to sneak off into little nooks and crannies here in the building. Let's, uh, you got anything up there on the feed, Fred? We get... Oh, Shelly Taylor Morgan getting ready there for uh, Pure Morning. Soap. Like she's, just, I guess, prepping and getting what her book. Oh, that's kind of weird. Wow. Love's always been my game. Wow. Jeez. How long does she do that? Go back in there. What is, uh... Many other wrong men like moles around the flame. <laughs> and if the wings get burned... Oh. It's a show about soap operas, isn't it? <laughs> well, on, uh, on Thursday's show, Maury will present an update on the Olympic Games in Lillehammer. In particular, they'll focus on the ice skating competition. It's about soap operas, isn't it? Hey, uh, let's not check in Michael Logan's room. Can we not do that? I wonder what's going on in there. Well, I mean, if she's doing that... Who knows? Guy would be doing backflips in there. Trash can concerto, symphony of wooden spoons, bottle smashing meat in the hands and feet of the Stomp Kings is musical compositions to the ears. Stomp is a new musical group from England, and they claim they can play just about anything, and they proved it on Good Morning America. They play garbage cans, they play matchbooks. Now, we turned them loose in our kitchen. And you guys are going to play a little kitchen concert? Yes. Yeah. All right. We told All them right. they could use anything they wanted, and they've been in here scrounging around, so. Really? so there go, uh, go, guys. This is it. All right.
<laughs> there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen. That is the highlight of GMA. Elvis has just left the building. Indeed he has. See you later, big guy. Good morning, America. We'll be broadcasting from China this Thursday. Spencer Christian will be visiting one of Hong Kong's open-air markets. Well, I don't want to alarm anybody out there in cable TV land, but last week on Bertice, Doug and Missy came on and for an hour talked about things that, well, things that we probably didn't need to know, but we're told anyway. Some interesting places that you all call home. Um, <laughs> where have you... Palm trees. Palm trees? Yes. In a palm tree or on a... On a palm tree. On a palm tree. Okay. They lean back real nice and a lady can kind of kick back. <laughs> on a palm tree. Okay, where else? Be cool, dude. <laughs> oh, you think be cool. I mean... <laughs> Uh, well, we, live, no. we live in Florida, and there's jetties down there that you can go and hide under rocks mm -hmm. and get a quickie real fast before a wave gets you, before anybody catches you. And <laughs> subsequently, we were, like, you know, down in the jetties, these big granite rocks, they dynamite, and they put up so the boats can come in and out. <laughs> and we look up, and there's, like, eight people standing around going, what? Oh, Look man. at the fish they got in Florida. <laughs> There's Amber learning to bounce back from the big blow-off. What to do when Mr. Wright doesn't call back. By the way, in that show, one audience member stood up and added this little comment. I've had sex down in a manhole, and I, I thought it was the greatest. <laughs> well then, coming up, should large women wear tiny clothes? And, uh-oh, oh boy, mom is taking her teeth out again. Next. Well, for Toby, you take out your false teeth Yes, as I well. do. And any, would you take them out for us now? Yeah. No, don't you What? Dare. Come on, well, let's oh. see it. <laughs> They pay me just enough every week to come here before you arms out and deliver the talk soup quote of the week. Quote this week comes from the Shirley Show and it features this medical critic. You had four inches and then all of a sudden you had ten inches. Now there's an operation. Thank you. There's no law that says overweight women shouldn't wear skin-tight clothes, but Kelly thinks there ought to be. She says her friend Camila is way too large to be dressed up in these form-fitting outfits. Nevertheless, Camila loves to put on low-cut tops and high-cut skirts and strut her ample stuff day in and day out. Speaking of stuff, Camila has one other habit that gets on Kelly's nerves. Uh, Montel, what might that be? The two of you have been friends for what, two years now? Yeah, almost. About own. two years. Does she dressed this way the whole time? She dresses this way when we go out or we're going to the mall. Anytime she thinks she's got to grab out for attention, she just puts on her little leggings that you can't melt into and stuffs her little bra <laughs> full of shoulder pads, which I have oh. one which she wears oh. three. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm talking mega fake busts up here, right? Wait, but you said Ooh. that you didn't know that she was doing that until what? You were out one night and a friend came over? We're in the mall at the mirror laughing. The friend starts crying. Camilla pulls tissue. This is before she uses shoulder pads. Tissue out of her bra so she can wipe her face. And she I'm gave the tissue from her bra to a friend? Yeah! <laughs> oh, I like see. Like she's going to wipe her face with something out of that. <laughs> oh, yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Nancy. As you can see, I'm a large-sized person. I feel good about myself. There's nothing wrong in wearing what you have on. If you feel good, that's all that matters. I have a club in Manhattan, Cafe 44. These are all the large and lovely goddesses. It's called goddesses. And we all go there every two weeks in Manhattan. We dance, we socialize. The men that go there, they love big, beautiful women. I'm sorry, if you are over 18, size 18, you do not wear spandex. Damn. 
The last woman we heard from there is Wanda. She thinks her mother needs to wear more flattering clothes as well. In other words, something perhaps her own size. And no spandex. On this Friday show, new details about the Tanya Harding case. Just when you thought it was safe to go back on the ice. Friday. Well, Sean doesn't like bringing girlfriends home to meet his mom. There's nothing wrong with the women he dates. Actually, it's, it's mom that he's, he's a little ashamed of. Rosemary doesn't give two hoots about impressing her son's dates. In fact, she likes to call them rude names, like, um, well, Burger Butt is one of them, whatever that means. Things have gotten so bad that Sean says he's afraid to have a relationship with any member of the opposite sex. At least that's what he told Richard Bay. You were on Geraldo, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, what happened to you on Geraldo? We are in the audience before. They do the stuff like before the show tapes. Yeah. And the guy's like, what kind of subjects do you like? So I yell out sex. And what did your mother say? Yeah, it's because he ain't getting none. <laughs> that was rude. How could you embarrass your son like that on TV? Now we're turning it off. I just do it out of the, you know, for fun. Not in front of all those people. Well, I, I'm also, I also told that, uh, I'm also told that you take out your false teeth yes, as I well. Yes, I do. At any, would you take them out for us now? Yeah. No, don't you What? Come on. Well, let's oh. see it. Oh. Don't get them mixed up. But I'm also told your mother does, your mother does something with her tongue that is truly amazing. <laughs> right? Yeah, she picks her nose with it. No, come on. Yeah. She does. Can you show us what you do with your tongue? Do it. <laughs> I need some more time off, don't I? <laughs> hey, we got a letter for you. Talk soup letter. Sure do. From uh, E. Downs in Fort Wayne, Indiana, no less. She wrote us a, a nice letter. Said at the bottom, I really like your show. Thank you. Uh, Emma says, Dear Talk Soup, is it you guys who put in those stupid sound effects during the Dick Bay show? Uh, well, uh, Emma, as it turns out, no, we, we aren't the ones that put in those silly sound effects. As a matter of fact, this show comes to us loaded with so many sound effects, we actually have to remove them uh, time in and time out. In fact, do we have a clip that has not had the sound effects removed? <laughs> It isn't so. So you see, Emma from Fort Wayne, we actually have to pull out sound effects. <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more Talk Soup right after this. We are? We're out of time. We're going to leave you with a very talented, crooned cowboy. Have yourself a fantastic weekend. We'll see you back here Monday. <laughs> It's dumb. Well, it certainly has to be. Coming up next, some not-so-great moments in advertising on Late Night with David Letterman, right here on E!